The tragic accident that we have all just witnessed in Florida has left the entire nation in shock. It is definitely a major alert signal for our country's aging infrastructure. It feels like the United States is literally falling apart right before our eyes. Just a few months ago, we had the devastating Texas power grid failure, which had catastrophic impacts for local residents during one of the coldest winters on record. Thousands of water pipes burst, millions of families were left without heat, without water, and without food for days and billions of dollars worth of damage was done. But for those who don't live in Texas, it was easy to forget that terrible crisis ever happened. However, now we're being reminded one more time how the rapid deterioration of our key infrastructures is ravaging the once beautiful cities previous generations left for us. And what makes this disaster even worse is that it could have been prevented. The collapse of the Champlain Towers unexpectedly happened on Thursday in the southeast corner of Surfside, Florida, right on the beach. The Seaview condo development was built in 1981, and it currently had a few two-bedroom units on the market, with asking prices ranging from $600,000 to $700,000. Authorities are still investigating what caused the accident. Everyone in the area seems extremely disturbed by how fast everything happened. Buildings like this do not fall in America, said Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. This is a third world phenomenon, and it's shocking. In an interview, Burkett said the worst has yet to come. We got a call at about two o'clock this morning. We came out. We've got a modern building that just collapsed. A large modern building, 12 stories, 130 unit condominium on the ocean just collapsed. It looks like there was an earthquake. It's inexplicable. And we're all scratching our heads trying to figure out what the problem is. He told Fox News, we've got a tragedy here that's beyond any of our imaginations. We've got 15 families out this morning. In the middle of the night, We've got a third or more of the building that collapsed like a pancake that I don't even want to think about what we'd find in that area," lamented the Surfside Mayor. We are suffering very badly. The worst is yet to come, I fear, because we've got at least half the building back there that is a pancake. It's collapsed onto itself, and you've got balconies that were once 10 or 12 feet apart that are now two feet apart on top of each other," he added. Right after the calamitous accident, County Mayor Daniela Levine declared a state of emergency and asked the governor to do the same so that the area could receive streamlined state resources for the recovery effort. Governor Ron DeSantis then declared a state of emergency in the entire Miami-Dade County, but help only arrived in the evening, hours after the collapse. Other authorities have shown extreme concern about the situation and worry the same could occur to other buildings. That's why Senator Annette Tadeo called for changes to building inspection rules. Buildings need to be inspected much sooner than 40 years, especially in a county where sea level rise can affect a foundation, she wrote on Twitter. According to a USA Today report, Last year, a researcher at Florida International University conducted a study that found that this particular building had severe infrastructural problems that only worsened over the years. The building has been sinking at an alarming rate since the 1990s, noted the 2020 study conducted by Shimon Vodinsky, a professor in the Department of Earth and Environment. Sadly, this proves that authorities have been aware of the potential risks during this whole time. They did nothing to prevent this disaster. They're also aware that our entire economy is moving towards an epic inflationary collapse, but they aren't doing anything to prevent that from happening either. Experts have been warning about America's crumbling infrastructure for decades, but their alerts are being left unheard. At this point, horrible catastrophes are occurring all across the nation on a regular basis, even before the Florida accident, 
Other structures were falling apart as well. Just a couple of days ago, Washington, D.C. residents witnessed the sudden collapse of the Kenilworth Bridge, which caved in over a highway, halting dozens of cars. According to recent reports, people were injured. The accident sparked chaos in the area. Shocking images show that the bridge fell on top of three lanes of traffic, with debris stretching all along the way. However, several months before the Kenilworth Bridge collapsed, Fox reporter Evan Lambert reported that a past inspection indicated that consideration should have been given to replacing the bridge. But as DC Council Chair Phil Mendelson has explained, maintenance on infrastructure is often a blind spot for governments, saying, Governments are very good at creating new infrastructure, but not so good at coming up with the money to maintain infrastructure after it's been created, Mendelssohn said. Many other DC regulatory agencies have confirmed that there were indeed problems with the bridge. A May 25th inspection report giving the bridge a rating of poor condition or four, the threshold that prompts the multi-year planning process to replace the bridge, the statement read. Previously, local authorities insisted that there were no structural risks whatsoever with the bridge. At the end of the day, none of this should come as a surprise for us. The American Society of Civil Engineers has been given warnings about America's crumbling infrastructure for a very long time, but our leaders have not been listening. Over the past couple of years, the ASCE has urged policymakers to reinvest in structures such as waterways, bridges, energy grids, and roads. In fact, a recent ASCE report highlighted that 43% of America's public roadways are in poor or mediocre condition. More than 230,000 U.S. bridges require repair and preservation work, and there is a water main break every two minutes causing an estimated 6 billion gallons of treated water to be lost each day. The federal government should be focusing on preserving and optimizing the use of the country's major infrastructures, but instead, some of them haven't had inspections or have been entirely abandoned for years. Now, in an attempt to remedy what has been neglected for decades, the new administration revealed plans to make a big effort to patch up some of our decaying infrastructures. But the approach they intend to take to accomplish that goal will end up causing a lot of economic pain in the long run. Even though it is unquestionably a noble goal, government officials are proposing an enormous amount of new spending instead of using existing funds to make these renovations. According to the White House, the total cost of these repairs, roughly $1.2 trillion, with more than $500 billion in new spending in the first year. But the question of how this plan would be paid caused a deadlock in Congress, Republicans refusing to undo any of the 2017 tax cuts. The preservation measure makes transformational and historic investments in clean transportation infrastructure, clean water infrastructure, universal broadband infrastructure, clean power infrastructure, remediation of legacy pollution, and resilience to the changing climate, said a White House fact sheet on the plan, also released Thursday. Needless to say, experts have already started to alert the plan is just not feasible because we can't simply create, borrow, and spend trillions of dollars whenever our politicians want, especially considering the dozens of trillions already printed, borrowed, and spent during the current recession. We have just started to feel the impact the previous spending bills had on the economy, with the inflation rate surging, consumer prices going through the roof, severe imbalances between supply and demand, and asset bubbles threatening to burst, while our living conditions deteriorate. In a sense, the more the government spends right now, the more they steal resources from our future generations, who will then have to pay for the problems our leaders are causing today. Although it may sound like a reasonable short-term solution, in the long run, 
It only intensifies our financial problems and makes our economic conditions even worse. We desperately need to fix our aging infrastructure. But for that, we should be using existing funds instead of letting them be diverted to fund unnecessary projects that aren't nearly as urgent as this one. Unfortunately, there's very little hope this is actually going to happen. Our politicians became addicted to the quick fix formula in which all they have to do is spend more and more money regardless of the consequences this could bring. And of course, if this infrastructure package gets passed, soon enough they will come up with more excuses to keep spending. We need to keep in mind that every dollar we borrow and every dollar we spend is a dollar that needs to be paid back later with interest. Lamentably, most Americans don't know or just don't care about the repercussions the current monetary policies will have on their lives in the future. The Federal Reserve is putting us on the same path we were during the previous financial crisis, only this time the proportions will be far greater and the impacts will be significantly more damaging. Our society has become addicted to immediate gratification, and our leader's lack of concern is making the population accept whatever they want to do to make life a little bit better in the present. But in the meantime, our long-term outlook only gets weaker and gloomier. It was only a matter of time before both of these structures collapsed. And it's also just a matter of time before our entire economy breaks down. The whole system is falling apart all around us, and things are doomed to get worse, as only a few people are worried enough to try to save our country. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to check out Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, the latest book of the economic collapse writer Michael Snyder. Now please don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. We'd love to read them. And please keep tuned for the next video from Epic Economist.